<laughs> Thank you, machine. It is, I, you know, we need we need to get a beer soon. I I, I miss you. I haven't seen you in ages, uh, and I really really would love to catch up. But uh, it's you're lucky. You're lucky. You're over there, actually, Alex. In the UK, it is stormy as all hell. But I couldn't help but getting dressed up for the occasion. I'm here with Fox Drop, of course. We are going into that first game of the day. We'll be very shortly getting over to Champion Select. But this is interesting. This is Excel. They look refreshed, and Marcoon and Advian have injected a much needed element of early game aggression. That, that I think XO were lacking previously, Foxy. Yeah, they really lacked that kind of like, just that oomph, you know, from, from the early game, exactly as you said. And you and me, you know, we've been casting the NLC, which is the, the UK league and the, and the Nordics and, and BTXL, their academy team plays in that league. So we've been seeing a lot of Marcoon, a lot of Advian. Those guys are really, really good domestically there too. And coming over to LEC, I was surprised to see that they didn't skip a beat at all. You know, they're just straight ahead, jumped straight into it. Marcoon's like two or three tower dives in his first game. Like what? I, I mean, I, I don't know what that's about, but I mean, this guy's just, they just didn't skip a beat on their first game at LEC. It was really, really impressive to watch. I mean, let's be honest, if you're going up against any kind of name, the name that would probably, maybe not this split, but would probably in, in, you know, instill the most fear is G2. Marku yeah. clearly not bothered in the slightest, absolutely popped off. But you look at his performances from European Masters, you look at his performances from the NLC, it is clearly something that he's capable of, but it's always very difficult to take you know, performances that you see at the European Masters level and translate them. Leader is a prime example of that. You see his performances in the European Masters and doesn't quite translate them over yeah. to the LEC. Exactly. I mean, this is his first split, you know, in the, in the LEC. I mean, he did have that stint on Misfits a few years ago, but you, considering how dominant leaders looked in the regional leagues, like, yeah, it's definitely not easy to transition that onto the LEC stage, which we have seen from Mark and Avian in, uh, in yesterday's game. We'll see if they can do it again today. Kicking off Champions Select straight away with that LeBlanc band. Huge respect over to New Duck, who had one of the most dominating mid performances on that champion. Ridiculously good game. And that's going to get taken away alongside the Thresh, which is Advian's best champion, in my opinion, most played over in LEC, uh, NLC, excuse me, uh, and he played it yesterday as well. So already we're going to get a mix up here. Is Vitaly looking to lock in at the first pick of the draft? It's going to be that. I mean, if it is a Kali, I would not be surprised. Uh, Leader is excellent yeah. <laughs> on this champion. He is he is known for his Akali. The Irelia and Akali bands came thick and fast in the European Masters over the last few years against this guy, and they have given him uh, it. So obviously, we have seen that there are ways to deal with Akali, and Gwen, who is extremely strong right now, goes straight over to XL, and if the Lee Sin gets locked in here, Foxy, it still offers that flexibility of a pick. You, know, you, you match the Akali, you may yeah. sometimes see it go to the jungle as well. Exactly, it's very good into Akali and Broken Blade yesterday in his interview post-game uh, when they beat Fnatic was saying how Lee Sin, you know, not as good in the lane on this patch but maybe being played a bit more in the jungle, you know, Marcoon, yeah, he played Volibear yesterday but don't get it twisted, like, he's a very high skill jungler, like, Nidalee's probably one of his best, always a, always a treasure to watch him play that, so Lee Sin, absolutely in his wheelhouse as well and as you're gonna see with these lock-ins, most likely that's gonna be uh, the least in jungle depending on, on on that Gwen flex but holy moly this is going really really fast Varus on the side <laughs> for crown shot alongside the Renekton and it's gonna be this twisted fate for Nuke Duck on X. we just we just saw that yesterday against Fnatic as well well yep. you know that was a that was a big big pickup and, and of course people talk about that element of the ultimate revealing Akali in the shroud you have both the Lee Sin and the Twisted Fate to lock down the Akali in that shroud now so uh, you know XL giving something that gives you know they're they're obtaining a tool to deal with the leader uh, but of course we see the Varus locked in a very strong AD carry and you can see that they are banning away the Silas and Morgana here but Whoa. Patrick he slaps it in straight into the Draven confidence in the bot lane from XL all right uh, Patrick is one of the best Draven players we have in the LEC. There are a few of them, but Patrick definitely, you know, he's been the carry for XL and what better carry champion than, than the man himself. Holy moly, we'll see what he gets paired up with here because that is an aggressive bot side. Oh my sweet lord. Okay, it's Galio Draven. This this team comp is all about going forward. You jump in, XL is just going to bundle into you. You've got to be really careful with your side of Vitality right there because this is going to be an absolute scrappy game from start to finish. Does this not just embody what we saw from XL yesterday? They are running a similar style, like just get in there, go hard, no like no breaks on this composition. They're just there to fight and they're there to kind of uh, lock up those team fights and look for the skirmishes and play off the back of the aggressiveness of these picks. And that that to me embodies what Advian and Marcoon have brought to the team, especially Marcoon, who really stepped up in the jungle. 
That's beautiful. Honestly, I just I just love this because this is the kind of draft that you wouldn't really see from Excel unless Markuna and Advian are in the squad. You know, before they made these roster changes, you wouldn't really consider this an Excel team comp. Uh, but but I just love it. It's really exciting to watch as well. I think the solos uh, for both teams is going to be quite explosive. You know, Renekton in the top side for SLT. Renekton is Excel's most banned champion as well, so they don't like playing versus that. Yeah. Gonna yeah. be scary. Well, we're going to go into game here, Foxy. We are getting into our first game of the day here. XL versus Vitality. We'll see you on the Rift. To game now, Foxy. I'm sorry, I cut you off there. Let's get let's get back no. into it. Let's get back into the, the meat. Don't of that. Want to listen to me, man. When you can watch the League of Legends, <laughs> honestly, what's that about? No, that's beautiful. I mean, this is it, right? I, I, just to finish the point, solo lanes really going where you're going to want to keep your eyes on, especially when self is playing Viego. Markoon's on the Lee Sin. Like these aren't junglers that like to sit back and chill. You know, we're going to be seeing some stuff, and there's a lot of good gank setup. Renekton with that W, especially if you can empower it. Doesn't have a flash on Gwen topside either for Cryers. Nuke Duck as well. He's T TF as a champion in general, tends to be a little bit vulnerable. So, yeah, a lot of explosive stuff can be happening around the solar lanes with the junglers. We've got a bit of time in this early game. What I really want to talk about is what is Markoon providing? To excel. I mean, we, we briefly touched on the aggression. You heard the analyst deck to, test talk about it. If he can dive a tower, he will. It kind of embodies what Markoon's yeah. about. But what is he bringing over Dan? Uh, you know, what has what he actually given Excel to, to clearly give them a new lease of life? I think for the one game that we've seen Markoon play in yesterday, the big difference was just the proactivity levels that Excel had. Uh, and especially like with Nuke Dug being able to get an advantage in the mid lane, how they were actually able to transition that into advantages across the map and to really snowball that good laning that Nuke Dug, Nuke Dug had yesterday against Caps. And I think that's really, really important. Whereas before it was like, yeah, maybe Nuke Dug can do a few things here and there. Like I think he's had a great split, but if you can't snowball it, if you can't actually use that, uh, then it doesn't really mean a huge amount. And I think Marku, you know, definitely used all of the pressure that Nuke Duck was throwing down mid. You know, all of that lane prio, all of that positive trading and the skirmishing. Like, Marku was just like, on point yesterday, and I I'm expecting more from it today as well. So, quick shots in the here this, this week. Uh, I, I thought I'd take the honorary role of the stats guy. Would you, would you like to hear some, some fun stats? Hit me. Hit me with some stats. <laughs> so, Dan's average kill participation as a jungler across his split has been around 58%. So around 58% kill participation. Markoon's in his very first game was 72%. Now one game, I'm not, I'm not going to get excited, mate. I'm not going to get excited about just one game is 72%, but it is a good sign about what he could potentially offer. And also, little fun stat about Nuke Duck, uh, it quite, it really is year of the duck. He has the highest damage share, I think, it's almost highest damage share of any mid laner. Oh. He's got a, he's got, oh my gosh, he's just walked in and stole it. Highest average share, and look at that. This is it, the proactivity in the early game. This is what we're talking about. Markoon, you said high kill participation, but I mean, even just this, look at this proximity that he's got. He's just walking in the enemy jungle, just really giving it to self-made. And the crabs are about to spawn now as well. You've got the mid push, you've got the bot push. Self-made knows this, and so he's gonna path towards top side. And we'll see, like, there is an opportunity here to double crab, there's the engage mid. Oof, Nuke Duck caught out a little bit there. But Markoon was on the sidelines, uh, but obviously with the HP that Nuke Duck was at, I don't think he wanted to commit and just better to burn the flash, but that does make him a bit of a target now, especially yep. versus leaders Akali. Absolutely. There it is. That's the vulnerability of Twisted Fate. You've got no mobility in your kit, and once that flash has gone down, it's hugely problematic for any kind of return ganks. Like I said about that double crab, I think it's coming through here. Self-made might just try and steal this one away. Excel, you know he's there. You can see the mist. Nuke Duck gets it. smite that away? I don't think he got it, right? Oh, we're gonna get a fight though. A little fight. Actually, Patrick forced to burn the flash already. Lavrov has roamed over, but XL just able to disengage. It would have been a bit of a risky fight to go a full on a full on brawl. And actually, no, it is self-made. Oh no, no, it is XL that picks it up, yeah. so self-made not able to smite that away. And it is a double crab start here for the XL roster. I really think this would have been like a perfect start for XL if they didn't just misstep a little bit and have to use two summoners here. The flash from Nuke Duck and the cleanse from the Draven. Leader oh, hit. he catches him! Blind oh. Sonic Wave from Markoon. Leader won't die to the Ignite. 
but a wild stab in the dark does wow. burn a summoner back here against Vitality. All right. If you had the flash, Nuki boy, that would have been first blood. But unfortunately, just going to push him out. TP on leader. He's not going to miss anything here. But it's little things like that. It's just making your presence known for Markun. Take note of what he did. Like level three, he walked into self-made jungle, took the red buff contested him at the chickens, made him make a hard decision about what side of the map he wanted to play on to go for the crab, and here again as well. You might not think that was much of an opportunity to go for a gank, but it's just little opportunities, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, Markun takes a lot of shots, <laughs> and you're going to be seeing even more of that as he progresses in LEC. I'm going to be showing my age a little bit here, Foxy, and just, you know, the viewer's discretion, I'm not that far off quick shot. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That, you know, the way that Markun's playing reminds me of the first time I really ever saw Diamond Prox play. And that's a bit of a throwback. Oh. It, you know, he's got that confidence. He's got that swagger about him in terms Hang of he about. doesn't care. He's straight on to SLT here. Look the river, though. I tell you, I have some friends. Yeah, that is... I, I mean... You mentioned the name Diamond Prox, and already you're talking about Elite Company. And to be perfectly honest, okay, we're one game into LEC. We're one game. We're one game into his LEC career. Um, okay. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I'm I know. Not trying I know. To say he's got the legacy. <laughs> I hear. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I, but honestly, yeah, like just the fact that he, just the, it's a bit like how uh, Forgiven used to play lane as well. I think Diamond Prox in the jungle and Forgiven in bot lane had very similar play styles in the sense that they contested you for everything. They made you. Think twice about whatever you were doing, wherever you were stepping on the map, whatever camp, whatever CS you were going for, you always had to think about it. You always had to think twice because you know, you just know that the other player is going to be there trying to do something funky with you. And I think, you know, Markin has shown that. I definitely think that that's uh, it's a fair comparison so far as far as uh, playstyles go. But maybe not quite so on the legacy part. <laughs> No, maybe, maybe not. He's got a long way to go before he can establish that for himself. But it is promising signs. And I think, you know, we, we've seen this guy grow as well from the very first time that he played in the NLC all the way through to his European Masters performance. Anyway, I think we haven't had much time to, to discuss what Vitality want to do, though. I think, obviously, the, the we kind of focus very heavily on Excel here. But Vitality, their comp, it looks very skirmish heavy. You know, it, it really looks like they're looking for those smaller skirmishes. A lot of assassination potential, trying to take out one or two targets, right. which especially makes Nuke Duck vulnerable. But look that, to Duck. me, feels like the essence look at him now they're all coming down here yeah like uh, sorry to interrupt you there but it's like whenever no, you no. see a tf tf leave lane like he gets an inch out of that lane like okay he's within sniffing distance of making a play he's just going to be shattering around here as self mate's taking the top side jungle like, that's the cross map here for for vitality self mate's getting the top jungle but that was only the chicken camp nothing else to take here so as long as cries doesn't get too greedy get out of position here like if xl can just go for that dragon as well then this is really good for them but it looks like they're just not gonna bother i'm not really. I think that's a bit of a missed opportunity there. I think definitely XL had an opportunity to go for that dragon and just uh, not able to pick that one up just yet. Maybe a little worried, I guess, because obviously uh, Leader is now level six and you put yourself in a situation where, you know, Akali jumps into a small skirmish, you might give Leader the opportunity. Um, I guess my guess was that their plan was to facilitate a tower dive and then go for the dragon when it was much more secure to do so. Sure. Uh, but you know they couldn't they couldn't make it happen. They couldn't. Like, the spidey senses from Vitality were tickling at the bottom side side of the map, and they knew exactly they knew exactly what was up uh, before it, that happened. Exactly, and you can you can look at the the vision that's in the river as well for Vitality. It's not much, but that one pink ward, that one pink ward that's just sitting in the middle. Uh, by by the mid lane there that rats that rats XO out you know if XO move down to the bot side it's really important that you get vision on the side of mid lane if you're playing versus a TF as leaders going in I'm not going to fully dedicate though but it's really really important on the sides because you know Twisted Fate leaves the sides and he walks he he, he hasn't, doesn't have to walk much further than that ward right there before you're in danger right so really really important to get that kind of vision down and it did save Vitality in that situation. Absolutely. And obviously, uh, whenever you play Twisted Fate, uh, you, you're always looking for an opportunity to just pop that out. Find a way into, yeah. a, into an engage where you can turn the tides. And Vitality have played relatively safe thus far. They haven't really given up much. I think, uh, was it Broken Blade in the, in the interview? He said that, you know, Twisted Fate is good against Fnatic because they overextend and push. But we might have an early engage here at the Rift Herald. You can see Self Made hanging on the sidelines. SLT has already stepped up. Nuke Duck with that gold card locked in warding Vitality 45. away where they can and self-made actually jumping in. Patrick is coming through and immediately Advian locked up. They're looking for the first kill. Patrick is there. First blood for Gwen. SLT on the menu and XL starting to clean up. Cries goes down and now Patrick in the front line. Self-made not yet taken down. Here's it is the crab that will drop eventually and is a two for two. The flash engage not quite there from crown shot and that small skirmish really doesn't give a major winner at the end of it.
But that whole fight is just so vitality. I can't believe they opted into that one when they know that Crown Shot's not there. He was walking through base when they engaged that play. It's a 4v5. But it's just such a vitality thing to do to go for this play. And you do have the champions to make it work. You know, Viego, Renekton, Akali at this level, all so good in these small skirmishes. And you can see, especially if you keep your eyes on self-made right here, when you're able to go for these resets, you've got this huge amount of damage as well. Like, it's just so, so scary, even though it's a 4v5. Look at that, Crown Shot's not here. He's just arrived to the fight. Still, mm. it's a 2 for 2 for Vitality. So all in all, you know, I mean, it's crazy they even went for it, to be perfectly honest. But, you know, the fact that it was only a 2 for 2 in an outnumbered fight, They'll take that. Markoon tried to go for it once again. And in that fight particularly, I actually think if Crown Shot had been there early, that might have been a whitewash for oh, yeah. by Vitality. Like a, like a, a Var Assault in that grouped up fight. But I have to give credit to Advium where it's due. The timing on his, his taunt was excellent. Like it stopped, it kind of completely gutted SLT's entrance to the fight. And then SLT just ran away with his, with his tail literally between his legs. Somehow Markoon <laughs> gets that away for free as Nuke Duck teleports in to support him. And that is the first Rift Herald picked up. Now the, the question is what XL are gonna do with that? Are they gonna use it to create some priority co to go for Dragon? Are they gonna try and just funnel some plates onto somebody? Is it gonna be that one to knock onto the mid lane tier one to try and get that down over the course of two Rift Heralds? Like plenty of options here uh, for XL in, in using that objective. Absolutely, I think that's a really, really good Good point any way you put this rift hold i think it's it's a good idea you know because you, you can you can put gold into your top laner your mid laner your bot laner doesn't matter they're all like carry style champions you want to get gold onto them and as far as positioning the lanes go as well did he not see gwen i don't think slt saw gwen oh my goodness here we are slt's in court he has got the slice and dice and the flash available and will do it as Markun jumps in. Hasn't found a good kick location uh, and unfortunately xl butcher their ultimate oh, there does the get teleport drop. cancelled and that is a kind of a saving grace for XL at the attempted gank there. God, my goodness, that was just, oh yeah, I think, okay, well, that was a bit, a little rough around the edges, I'll be honest with you there, Kin, and that was not 100% pretty, but good salvation there from Nuke Duck to get that cancel on the TP, else that would have been hideous. Leader coming in there with that Akali, you're kidding, right? That has to be the the worst thing you can see as a professional League of Legends player is getting TP collapsed on by Leader's Akali. But fortunately, New Dog was there to stop it from happening. As we're seeing a lot of the uh, Vitality members here push, posturing towards his top side, just dissuading Markoon from using that Rift Held and, and getting that first tower. Good run there. I like that. Uh I like that from Newt Duck as well, just using the ultimate to dissuade any action yeah. from Vitality rather than trying to be proactive. You don't really see it used as often in that scenario, but uh, it is a good a good way to kind of stop any major roams coming through. And as you mentioned, you, I think you hit the nail on the head with that analysis. It's specifically from a player standpoint, you don't yeah. want to give Leader the opportunity to pop off on Akali, because if you give Leader the opportunity to pop, on, or pop off on Akali, I think he might be the worst mid laner to face on a Fed Akali in this entire league. Absolutely. Uh, so, Good presence of mind uh, from Nuke Doctor to just really make that aggressive play to stop it happening. Yeah, we've seen the goal differences here of the team as well. It's 1k in the favor of Cries on top side, but also look at Draven. He's uh, quietly sneaking up there with uh, getting, that, getting that kill in the, in the fight top side. And uh, this is good news, you know, if you've got a Draven on your team and you're able to get him ahead early, it's always nice stuff. And if you can play through a Draven, that is just one of the easiest win conditions in League of Legends, legitimately. If you have a Draven on your team and he's doing well and you just stick around him and make stuff happen with the Draven, there's a very good chance stuff's going to go in your favor. There's not much counterplay to a strong Draven. So Vitality are going to have to be really, really careful of this. Mag Mark, I almost called it Magnoon. Wow, that is a throwback. That is not Magnoon. <laughs> that, that is Mark a throwback. <laughs> wow. Mark Markoon, you know, being in the bot side here, throwing down that herald he's gonna get all the plate gold for himself though actually not able to pick any of it up but still this is positive signs for excel they do have that 2000 gold lead and a lot of that sitting in the back pocket of patrick so for excel like, you know, we're, we're heading up to 15 minutes in the game like what do you what do we want to see from them to activate their win conditions they, they clearly want to be aggressive they clearly want to look for fights around objectives skirmishing you know, a, you know as a five will be in their favor with the aggressive comp that they've got uh, like, where do we want to see them put the pedal to the metal, really? I honestly think you just run a Vitality if you're XL. You know, you wait for this next Dragon to spawn, for example, or maybe you group up mids and, and try to get, like, a, a tower play, something like that. Um, I, I think that honestly will work really well because, like you say, XL's team comp, any of these characters, like the Gwen, the Twisted Fate, the Draven, like, they're strong by themselves, but more importantly, when they're paired up 
with with the, the jungle. Oh my goodness, they got in. Oh, that's aggressive onto leader. He uses the ultimate, gets kicked back into Nuke Duck here, taken oh. down by Advian. And XL, they have a penchant for using leader in that mid lane, but now Nuke Duck the target. It engage on oh. him. Beautiful stopwatch. Buys the time to disengage, but that is not done for self made. He gets the kill at the end of it, finds the possession, and now looks for a cheeky little gold card. But it is a one for one overall. Mid lane for mid lane at the end of it. Self made's aggression coming through now. You stole my red buff at the start, mate. I'm, I'm a, I've got a bit of a bone to pick with you over the course of this game. And there it is, just one for one at the end of the day. But Patrick, he wasn't there. He was boss. Okay, 1v2 with the Draven. Oh, with my oh Patrick! What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he went for the ulti redirect. I mean, we gave him style points, but that's unfortunately the only kind of points he's going to get for that one. I mean, I respect him, man. What a Draven player, honestly. Uh, do, you know, do you know what? He was zoning. He was zoning for the tower. You know, we've got that first tower <laughs> that's, uh, that's just about to drop with a single basic attack, and Patrick will get the gold for it. So it was a zoning flash. We're going to call okay. it a zoning flash. So two things. This is the replay. We're going to bring up the mid lane fight. What I was going to say before I was rudely interrupted by this mid lane skirmish is the 2v2. Really, really strong for the side of XL. No matter who the jungler matches up with and in this situation, flash gold card, really, really hard to play against. But it's a good response here from Vitality. And as you can see as well, Crown Shot is now joining the fight. SLT has now moved down too. So importantly, this is kind of like a, a five-player commit to that mid lane, where Draven was able to stay bot side, Cries on, on Gwen was able to stay top side. So they're actually getting a lot of stuff XL from those sides. So the fact that it was only one for one really worked out in XL's favor there, and even led to that first Bartarian bot from Patrick. Look at that, he's a rich boy. Love He's that. a rich, rich lad right now. Boyrin on 7k gold. Nuke Duck's got a load in his back pocket. Cries obviously in a pretty good spot as well. The big carries, the guys that you want the gold on are getting the gold. And Makun obviously had that early aggression. He's He's been involved in all of the kills for, for XL so far. He is starting to slip behind a little bit compared to self-made, mainly through farm. You can see he's a little he's a level behind and a little bit of gold down, but he has been facilitating his carries, which has been the main thing. Absolutely. And Ali Sin, you know, falls off in, in, as far as damage goes, well, depending on what he builds, but generally as a damage threat, as a carry threat, doesn't, uh, you know, isn't as scary as the game goes on. But as far as facilitating goes, you know, you're still very, very good. On Lee Sin, as we're going to see it here against Leader. Yeah, Leader holding on to the shroud for the time being. We'll dive back in. He wants this engage, <laughs> but will eventually dive back out. Uh, doesn't Leader, quite man. find the uh, yeah. Don't quite find the <laughs> angle that they were looking for here. But maybe setting up for that Drake, which does get started up by Makun. Yeah, well, this is interesting. So we bought some time here for Vitality with that play on the bot side. Uh, a self-made really. It looked like Vitality was just going to trade this top herald for the dragon. Which is what they will then what they've ended up doing here and is I think this is smart here for Vitality because you are a little bit behind in this one. You do have some scary members on the side of Excel. You know, with Patrick having like one and a half items complete here. It's just a little bit terrifying, just a teeny weeny little bit. And also remember yesterday's game, Vitality were winning pretty hard in the lane phase, and then it was that 17 minute dragon where they tried to team fight and Astralis got a good good flank. They lost the team fight. And Vitality from that point lost the game like six minutes later, you know, so I, I think, you know, showing restraint, not going for that, not risking it, not flipping it at the Dragon, it's a good improvement from yesterday. You can see actually we're, we're starting to see the Vitality, I guess, tactic open up here. They're going to the one 3 one Varus has got that wave clear in the mid lane with his arrow. They're putting Leader in a, side, uh, a strong side lane, looking for the 1v1. They're putting Renekton and SLT in the other. And they're just looking to avoid these unnecessary skirmishes. They don't want to get drawn into playing against that strong Draven. They're trying to utilize that side pressure to their advantage right now. And it seems to be working in terms of stopping XL. XL haven't been able to do much on the map. They haven't really found much love in any of their, their attempted ganks right now. And, and I think they're neutralizing that sort of strong XL mid-game skirmish, which they don't really want to buy into. Yeah, definitely. I think that's quite important. As Crysis going in here against... Oh my goodness, it's going to so much damage. That's so scary. Uh, it looks like there's a big target on Leader's back this game. <laughs> which is, I guess, not that uncommon. It is Leader. But Akali is just... She's so hard to punish. I just don't think XL are really going to be able to find a winner to do this. Unless you have Nuke Duck. You know, unless you have Nuke Duck who can reveal the Akali and get that solid lockdown with the gold card. I just think it's uh, it's it's too much to ask for. Patrick's going to get... <laughs> Got yeah, going to have to get the uh, hero's entrance back onto Labrov here, who gets taunted up by Advian. He's getting taken down low and drops. Advian gets the kill to start things off, and SLT, he's entered into the wrong fight. 
forced to back away very quickly and XL pick up another kill, but it's about what they can convert. And right now, that's not much. No, but they're going to walk into the enemy jungle here. They've got so much vision already put down. So the whole whole quadrant of this map is under XL's control. And honestly, this is just the difficulty of playing versus someone like Twisted Face, someone like Galio. Like, if you think you have someone caught out of position from the side of Vitaly, as you look here, it looks like Patrick's caught out of position a little bit. Even though he does have the cleanse, so even, even so, this is a, a bit generous here for, for Vitaly, thinking they can get that. But just look how quickly it all turns around. Galio ults in, Twisted Fate ults in. Uh, yeah, it looks like someone's by themselves, but they're never really by themselves. And you just got to respect that if you're playing versus Globals. It's about a 4k gold lead now. Uh, it's sort of XL been chipping away at the Vitality comp right here. Uh -oh. Finding small advantage. And then actually, they're going to try and catch out Selfmade. Locked up by Advian. Advian is really popping off on this Galio, but Selfmade should be able to escape. Cries does not have the executing Ooh. potential. He dodges away from the Whirling Axes as well, and Selfmade escapes from what looked like a really rough situation. I think he was just trying a little bit too hard right there, Selfmade. That's not, that's not a safe place to be in at all. Yes, you can face check with your, with your invisibility nonsense, but it's not enough. It's not good enough, <laughs> and you can still get caught out, as, as you saw there. You know, you've seen the majority of the Vitality lineup here now, just grouping up towards mid, getting that push in. After this, they should look to get some vision down in the enemy jungle here. We do have Dragon spawning in 130, so any vision that you can get down at this point should stick in preparation for this dragon play. We'll see if they're able to do it. It looks like so far they're just not going to be able to get anything. That ward's going to expire. They've got to move together. Get those sight white vision sticks. No? All right. Not going to happen. So just get that mid push in an unsuccessful attempt to get in some vision in the enemy jungle. All right, we've got a couple of uh, pretty important item spikes being picked up. I'll talk about it in just a moment, though, because that is that mid lane tier one that will eventually drop. And actually, that's an engage from Lavrov. Not sure you want to be there, buddy. You've just, you've literally just been taught this lesson, Lavrov. You've literally just been taught this lesson. And XL aptly punished. A very, very short Twisted Fate ultimate, but it does the job. And Advian, you like carry Dalio right now, man. Look at him. <laughs> It's Cario, baby. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Two people down. <laughs> <laughs> Two people down. You're going to turn straight towards this Baron. Self made alive. Crown shot. Leader. Three carries on the side of Vitality. They're not going to want to let this one go down for free. Advian is in again, straight on to him, and he gets the kill onto Selfmade. Now Leda has bitten off more than he can chew. They'll immediately turn back onto the Baron, but Leda finds the kill. The shutdown there is a big one as he jumps. Leda gets two! That is why you've got to respect this man, Zakali, but it drops to Patrick, and he gets the kill, but he does the job. He stops the Baron, and Leda, he grasps nothing out of thin air. It's just never over when Leader's still alive. Never. You can never count that guy out. That's two kills right there. Honestly, it shouldn't have happened. And maybe even a Baron that should have gone down to XL. We're going to see here this engage from Lebrov. I, this is just not a great engage. I mean, there's not really too much to say about it. It's really not that good. Uh, okay, it's terrible. Terrible engage. Lebrov's going to go down. And the rest of Vitaly just, you know, they're up a creek without a paddle. And easy peasy lemon squeezy pick off right here. A great, you can see the power. I know it was only like a two foot twisted fate hole, but you can just see how easy it is to lock someone down and then follow up, more importantly, from the side of XL with things like releasing, etc. And then leaders is going to do leader things, but we are going to look towards the dragon now. Now be careful, Vitality. This is where you threw the game before yesterday. 5,000 gold down. I mean, leaders to target. They, they, they want to punish him for that engage. And nice Zonyas to buy some time here. Let's see if XL can capitalize on it. His leader jumps in. Nice kick back towards the tower here as he dives back in. I think leader's going to drop, and he does. Patrick, you mentioned he's strong. He's bopping people with those axes, and now XL are looking for the engage. Labrov drops to the second. SLT and Crown Shot desperately looking for the exit, but SLT will find no love there. A huge amount of health back, but SLT will drop just at the end, and Crown Shot cannot find those executes. He cannot find those kills and XL will walk towards the dragon with every single member left alive. At some point you've got to respect the twisted fate. It's so so strong at catching out side lanes. Vitality have been caught by this several times. Leader especially like it's so good versus Akali. You can see her in a shroud. You can lock her down point and click CC the enemy of every assassin. Every champion that has some kind of fancy outplay buttons. You just can't do it versus a gold card. And look at this 2v2 combo. It's just too much. Like, come on. You've got to respect this. You've got to respect this at this point. 
a little bit too far forward here from Lido. And as you can see, like Vitality, they're kind of close, but because they're behind in this game, they're not able to get the inside track to help out Lido, which then means that it's XL that arrives first. And in that case, it's XL that's going to win the fight. Decent LeBrov ulti, but it's not going to be enough to dissuade the side of XL, who are going to take this team fight. And I assume afterwards they took Dragon as well. That's going to be two Dragons into their pocket. And Vitality, more importantly here, they're pretty far behind in gold now. What's that? 6k? Oof. That's, uh, that's a decent amount of gold to be behind at 24 minutes in the game. They're not going to be happy about that one. No. C can I just talk for a moment? Yesterday yes. it was all about the Marcoon show, right? Yesterday was the Marcoon show. What? Today, my man, <laughs> it's the Advian show. I mean, and that's is a ridiculous it... <laughs> amount of gold. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, this is it, right? ADC diff is support diff. That's what they say, no? There we go. Excellent. So but, I'm, but, but I'm... look, it's, it's Kilpatrick. He's got like 10 out of 11 kill participation. He's yep, got four yep. kills. I swear every big engage has been facilitated by Advian. Like, sure. yeah, if yeah, you yeah, wanted yeah. your two rookies to pop off on the weekend where it matters most, where XL wanted to turn their fortunes around, you know, when you make subs into a team, there's always that uncertainty. Like, is this going to work out for us? It, it's a, it's yeah. a gamble. It's, it's a roll of the dice. Well, the dice has turned up double sixes because XL have just clearly have made a, 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 a change that's not just a one-off potluck, you know, potluck shot against a, a potluck shot against a, a G2 that's down and out. They seem to have a new formula that's working for them. It's really beautiful stuff. And honestly, it's just the way they play the early game to me, which is just so refreshing. I am very biased because XL, obviously, as the British organization, they were the first team that I ever casted on LAN. And yeah, I, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm biased. I want to see XL do well. <laughs> but the fact that XL have played a very specific style for almost two years, I guess, at this point, completely shifted with the introduction of Avian and Marcoon. It really is night and day. And, they're looking to get a 2-0 weekend, which is very, very good for a team that's looking to secure their first playoffs in the LEC. Yeah, and that is the goal for XL, the long-term goal. I'm sure they'd want more than just playoffs, but just hitting the playoffs, can you imagine the weight lifting off their shoulders if they were able to do that? Now, Kreis, he's also been a little bit uh, sort of under the radar. He's had a good performance on the Gwen. Obviously, Gwen, a ridiculously strong champion right now, and uh, he's making great use of it. We've had so much action, Foxy. I haven't really been able to sort of catch up on these item spikes, but there are some really big ones that have come through, like that Rift Maker's there. The Mythics are all starting up for XL. They're in a good spot, but especially, especially Patrick. Three and a half complete items yeah. on that Draven right now. Absolutely. And, oh, can see a bit of an engage. Oh, there's a cheeky penguin down from Avion as he sidesteps the Leona ulti. Okay, it's a bit BM, but that's fine. You can have a little bit of fun on your time in the LEC stage. I'm, I, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm like 90% sure about this one, um, but I did do a little bit of goofing as I was doing my research uh, coming into 11.13. I'm pretty sure the armor pen item Patrick's got, Lord Dom's, that got buffed. If if it did get if it didn't get buffed this patch, then uh, the goof that I made was I accidentally researched 11.3 and not 11.13. <laughs> So I'm get, I, I, ha I do have my two patches a little bit crossed here, but either oh, way, Foxy, you're either so way. funny. When we were doing, just for context, everybody, when we were doing prep, Foxy was talking about all the patch changes and he was like, wait a second, this is 11.3. <laughs> I was like, why is everyone talking about mage items? Lichbane's got it cost reduced by like 100 gold. That's not going to bring any mage. In. And then, yeah, I'm just completely in the wrong patch, but that's okay. We've kind of salvaged it a little bit, maybe. Who knows? But still, regardless oh, of whether dude. or not this is the... Uh, Post 11.3 or 11.13 armor pen item. It is a very strong Draven. 700 gold bounty right now for him as well. Suffering from success. Four items coming through. Like he's future proof with this build as well, right? A, a, a preemptive armor pen means that no matter what comes through from Vitaly, he's always gonna deal a huge amount of deeps. Guardian Angel as well. Like, he, it's really hard for him to get shut down, so that, that really narrows down the win cons from Vitality. You know, it's just a really smart item building here from the Draven. And uh, XL slowly kind of, as you said, slow and steady right now. They're taking the opportunities when they present themselves, but it doesn't really feel like they're massively forcing the issue. They're kind of waiting for those moments around the objectives to, to look for the engages that work for them. Leader's still providing a nuisance in the side lanes, but you can see that XL's game plan seems to be bring vitality to us, look for the engage where it's on our terms around the objectives, and then utilize those successes to go for any other big neutral objectives that are going to help secure the game for us. And it, it, they're not completely secure right now, but they're definitely in a great spot. That he's, that is, is, is he doing like 5% of Dragon Queen? <laughs> more than that. And Patrick's got a ridiculous amount of damage, and now you can see XL. Lavrov, 
Lands it. He looks for the engage, but Markun's not going to commit too heavily to this. You can see XL are happy with the Drake, and they are going to walk over and get some control over the Baron pit. This is just ideal situations here from XL, and they're playing it really smart. He's just going to get caught. He's got no Zonyas now. He goes in, and that is the engage coming through. Christ picks up leader straight away. The problem child is down for XL, and now they're cleaning house. Two members, three members, double kill there for Patrick. The Draven really accelerating, and this surely should be a completely free Baryon. As Ka Gario, Calio, what do you call it? Cario, <laughs> Cario he baby. picks up the kill for Advian, and they go for the Baron. Beautiful stuff. 10,000 gold lead here as well. This is it, right? When XL is playing from such a commanding lead at this point, all you've got to do is walk into the fog of war, and then good things happen. Vitality will walk up a little bit too far forward, maybe they'll face check you, but if they're blind, they don't really have much choice. It's a rock and a hard place on leader, just a teeny, weeny bit too far forward here. Thinking that XL turned towards the Baron and that he could go up a little bit further in mid, which he absolutely could not, and he's gonna go down from first kill. And once leader's dead, honestly, especially, especially considering the huge gold deficit in this game, you need leader to be alive to assassinate Patrick. So once he goes and down, the threat from Patrick, look, psh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's, like, that's that just said damage. it all. <laughs> horrible, horrible. Actually, do you know, we talked about at the start of the game, why you sometimes see Twisted Fate picked into a Kali. I think that fight illustrated perfectly yep. why that happened. This whole game has illustrated it, mate. The whole bloody game. <laughs> they yeah. just press R on Twisted Fate, goal carded her, and, and just endlessly killed her. Like legit, it's just such an insane pick into the Kali. They played it really, really well. And Nuke Duck, 1, 2, and 12. Massive kill participation. Maybe not popping off in individual kills, but has clearly facilitated the success of his team here. And Exile now have that Baron. Uh, and when you have the Baron, you can really shut down any 1-3-1 attempts, which is what Vitality's doing, trying to do the whole game. And Exile can now start to knock on the doors of those inhibitors. Absolutely. And Cryos just gives... He does not... <laughs> He doesn't, he doesn't care, care. Mate. He just does not. He does so much damage as well. I have to say, it's a okay. SLT is in trouble. He's gonna fall oh, down. Oh, SLT! It's been two bad games in a row for you, and you get taken down once more. But that's the engage here. Now onto Patrick, okay. but Patrick himself. He's pretty goddamn fed, and he's doing a huge amount of damage, healing loads of those basic attacks as well. He's still alive. He is still alive and drops into the GA finally. You can't kill a Draven that is just this fed. And XL now pushing down towards those inhibitors. 2v4 and it almost comes out at top for XL. It's just disgusting, man. This Draven is huge. He's way too strong. XL are going to lose Advian, but that's all at the end of the day. That's not too bad. You know, they're going to get this top inhib. Going to get that mid inhib turret as well. We'll see if they can actually take the inhibitor. It is going to go down too. So this is big. You know, you've got the dragon spawning in, in just under two minutes. That will be XL's next look as well here because that will be the dragon soul. And, you know, I would imagine the game is going to get pretty hairy at that point. Vitality's gonna want to contest. Exo's gonna want to secure the soul. And either way, that team fight can decide the whole game. I mean, they're going straight in on it. They, they, they want that soul. They're gonna secure the vision around it. You can see Nuke Duck teleporting straight into the pit just to start, start to push that wave down on the bottom side. That is the next objective that XL want. Two inhibitors down is going to create natural pressure on the map, the areas of the map that are the furthest away from this soul. XL have got the absolute prime setup for this, including the Baron Bush, which they already have. SLT now has to be a little careful, but XL are not happy with just the soul. They've reset immediately, nuked up, teleported to get wow. that advantage yeah. and push up towards this second here and uh, second inhibitor tower. Not inhibitor tower, second tier tower. This is actually really smart from XL. I did think that the TP from nuked up was maybe a, a bit unnecessary, a bit too much. Oh. I mean, Lavrov, he's had enough. And uh, that lesson that he tried to get learned at the start hasn't happened, and he is the first target here for XL as Markoon is on a rampage. Another kill for Patrick, unkilled, dominant 6 0 10 on the Draven, and Vitality look lost in the water. They cannot fight XL, who now have just lost Baron, but it is still a massive man advantage on the map. It's huge. XL might not even go towards this dragon here. They might just look to end the game. Oh my goodness, Crown Oh, oh Markoon going in! Nuke Duck finds the way. He has the GA to keep himself alive. They're going for the end. They don't care about the soul. Leader now the target, and he will drop into the floor. SLT, the final man to go down, and XL played a 2-0 week in the LEC. Beautifully played from XL, both yesterday and today. This team looks like a whole different team with the addition of Markun and Adrian. It's night and day, and they want to start off their playoff run on the right track. Two and zero, just about do it for them.
Yeah, absolutely brilliant stuff from Excel. And uh, honestly, you can see how good they look with a refreshed roster. It is absolutely fantastic. Obviously, as you can see, Schalke versus Astralis coming after the break. Uh, you guys, I think, can vote for your player of the game. Make sure you play for your key player of the game. It should be down on your screens. You can see who's available. Unfortunately, I cannot see right now, but I'm sure they are great selections for the player of the game. Uh, in the meantime, Foxy, that about wraps it up, I think, for us. Schalke and Astralis, again, are playing next match. They pulled off two huge upsets yesterday, and after the break, they look for their first 2-0 week in summer in a very, very big game. to be discovered. Some of them are big, and some of them are small. But that's the thing with ideas. They don't just come to you. To find them, you have to move. Kia, movement that inspires. Systems are overloading. We can't risk another game. We need to take a break and regroup. We're starting to lose our mind. Captain, we cannot go back to Elo Helm. Last time it took us months to get out of it. Initiate break protocol. Hurry up! Uh, yes! Uh, yes! Yes! I did it! I, we did it! We did it! Even the biggest champ needs a break.
Welcome back to the LEC as Excel on a brand new roster claims a convincing victory against Vitality. And it's been a crazy week for you. You took down G2, you took down Vitality. How has this weekend been for you? I mean, it's been absolutely crazy. There was, I don't know, I think it was a week ago or something. I, I was still uh, playing an academy team and, uh, you know, just trying my best to maybe become LEC level. And I didn't really know what that was. And uh, now I'm here. So it's, uh, it's completely crazy. And how has this process of adjusting to the new roster, bringing this existing synergy you had with Markroon with the new XL players? Um, I think it's been really good, actually. I think Mark and I are both really vocal players, so we come in and we really create a um, uh, a way to play or a vibe within the team, and it's slotted really well with the personalities already there, uh, veterans who knew uh, what to do in their respective role, and so if we are the, the structure of communication, that's uh, it, it fits uh, really well together. So, so far I came in, I was a bit scared that maybe something was going to go wrong, but so far it's, it's going great, and we hope to continue that uh, throughout the next uh, weeks. And we can certainly see that on your performance on the Rift, but I specifically want to call out your performance with Patrick because we are already seeing some amazing, uh, this bot lane has been playing three years level with Synergy. So how has Patrick and you been working together to build this Synergy and how do your play styles complement each other? Um, I think we naturally fit quite well together uh, initially. So uh, we both have, I think, a very good view uh, of the lane together. Um, so the moment I start playing with Patrick, it already felt uh, quite uh, quite easy. Um, and uh, he's really, really good to work with. Um, he looks at everything uh, he needs to look at and uh, he's an incredibly talented player. So uh, I think just working with him is, uh, is super easy from the get go. So I'm sure there's going to be more uh, more good stuff coming from us uh, as a bot lane. And of course, and another thing that I did want to talk about is the sheer confidence that you and Markun has been performing with. And Markun on the PGO yesterday reiterated that he didn't let go, like he didn't let the nerves take over you. Is there a particular tip, especially for rookies, for not letting nerves take over you, is it in an LEC? Um, I think what helps is to just, uh, you know, decide for yourself that this is going to happen. You're going to play a game and uh, uh, regardless of the outcome, uh, you know, you've worked the hardest. So as long as you if you've done 100 uh, percent of the work that you need to put in, uh, all you can do is relax because everything else is an outside factor. Uh, you play your game and you smile, whatever happens. Uh, I think that's my philosophy, at least. So. Hmm. And out of curiosity, and as you and Mark can possibly continue to play in the LEC, is there a particular team or a bot lane that you simply cannot wait to face? Um, well, initially it was uh, Reckless and Mickey, but uh, they're already, um, I've already played them. Um, I'm really excited to play both uh, Karsi Kaiser sure. and uh, Hans Sama and the Trumby. They're both amazing players. I think they're super good in lane and uh, I, I'm just uh, buzzing to, to start playing them as well. And we will certainly look forward to it. Uh, one last question. So with this today's victory, you are now tied with Vitality on sixth place. Is Excel making it to the playoffs? Well, uh, obviously, that's what we're <laughs> going for. So, uh, uh, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. Every team is really close. But I think if we can continue the trend we're on, uh, we stay level-headed uh, uh, and we just uh, approach it week by week. I think with this roster, it's definitely a possibility that Excel Esports makes playoffs. And we cannot wait to see what's going to happen. And thank you, Advian. And after the break, we will return with two teams that pulled up huge upsets yesterday, Shao Kei and Astralis. Please stay right here.